In the 17th century, there was still some hope that even if the Earth was not the center of the universe, it might be the only world. But Galileo's telescope revealed that the moon and the planets showed unmistakably that they had as much claim to being worlds as the Earth does, with mountains, craters, atmospheres, polar ice caps, clouds. Well, some hoped, even if the Earth isn't at the center of the universe, the sun is. The sun is our sun. So the Earth is approximately at the center of the universe. But by the 19th century, observational astronomy had made it clear that the sun is but one lonely star in a great self-gravitating assemblage of suns called the Milky Way galaxy. Well, our Milky Way is the only galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is in fact one of billions, perhaps hundreds of billions of galaxies notable neither in mass nor in brightness nor in how its stars are configured and arrayed. Well then, at least our galaxy is at the center of the universe. Nope, this is wrong too. There is in fact no center to the expansion, no point of origin of the Big Bang, at least not in ordinary three-dimensional space. Well, even if there are hundreds of billions of galaxies, each with hundreds of billions of stars, no other star has planets. Today, we have firm evidence for at least three planets orbiting an extremely dense star, the pulsar designated B1257 plus 12. And we found for more than half the stars with masses like the sun's that early in their careers, they're surrounded by great disks of gas and dust out of which planets seem to form. Other planetary systems now look to be a cosmic commonplace. Well, if our position in space doesn't reveal our special role, our position in time does. We've been in the universe since the beginning, give or take a few days. We've been given special responsibilities by the Creator. As for humans, we're latecomers. We appear in the last instant of cosmic time. The history of the universe till now was 99.998% over before our species arrived on the scene. In that vast sweep of eons, we could not have assumed any special responsibilities for our planet, or life, or anything else. We were not here. Well, even if our position, our epoch, our motion, and our world are not unique, maybe we are. We're different from the other animals. We're specially created. The the particular devotion of the creator of the universe is evident in us. This position was passionately defended on religious and other grounds. But in the middle 19th century, Charles Darwin showed convincingly how one species can evolve into another by entirely natural processes, which come down to the heartless business of nature saving the heredities that work and rejecting those that don't. Man in his arrogance thinks himself a great work worthy of the interposition of a deity. Darwin wrote telegraphically in his notebook, more humble and I think truer to consider him created from animals. Close quote. Well, even if we're closely related to some of the other animals, we're different. Not just in degree, but in kind. On what really matters, reasoning, self-consciousness, 
tool making, ethics, altruism, religion, language, and nobility of character. While humans, like all animals, have traits that set them apart, uh, otherwise how could we distinguish one species from another? Chimps reason, are self-conscious, make tools, show devotion, and so on. Chimps and humans have 99.6% of their active genes in common. Okay, maybe we're not much. Maybe we're humiliatingly related to apes, but at least we're the best there is. God and angels aside, we're the only intelligent beings in the universe. But the simple fact is that we have not yet found extraterrestrial life. We're in the earliest stages of looking. The question is wide open. If I had to guess, I'd guess that the universe is filled with beings far more intelligent, far more advanced than we are. But of course, I might be wrong. Such a conclusion is at best based on a plausibility argument derived from the numbers of planets, the ubiquity of organic matter, the immense time scales available for evolution, and so on. Extraterrestrial life aside, if self-congratulatory pretensions to centrality have now retreated to such bastions impervious to experiment, then I'd say that the sequence of scientific battles with human chauvinism seem to have been, at least largely, won. But most of the debates have now been settled decisively in favor of a position that, however painful, can be encapsulated in a single sentence. We have not been given the lead in the cosmic drama. Perhaps someone else has. Perhaps no one else has. In either case, we have good reason.